Welcome to State of Tech, my name's Jared, and today we're gonna to take a look at upgrading our Macs to OSX Sierra. Now, Apple released OSX Sierra early to a lot of us who decided to maybe go and try the beta. Uh, they did a public beta, they've done that the last couple of years, and it gave everybody kind of a sneak peek into what OSX Sierra was going to include. So today is its official launch day, which makes it available to all of us, which is pretty neat, and it's a simple download from the App Store. But before you go doing this, there's a couple things that I wanna talk about. The first is that you always wanna make sure to have a recent backup, and so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. But the second is that not all the time are applications ready for the next version of OS X. Even though Apple pre-releases their you know, developer previews pretty far in advance, it still takes developers a little bit of time to make sure that the final actual shippable version of a new operating system is going to work with their application. For example, in the past, I've had issues with Adobe Photoshop and stuff like that. These days, it's gotten much better. Apple has, you know, gives the developers, um, Apple gives the developers access to their software much further in advance, so it gives developers a chance to play catch up. But if you have customizations or any tweaks or things that are running for certain applications that you can't live without. I recommend making sure that you check to see if there's compatibility with OS X 10.10 Sierra now, because if there isn't, then you're gonna have some issues potentially, and it would be a real bummer for you not to be able to use your system in the way that you're used to using it. So before we go ahead and install OS X Sierra, I'm gonna show you how to make sure that your computer is backed up before we go ahead and do that. So the first thing that you're gonna need is some sort of a hard drive to connect to your computer so that you could do a Time Machine backup. Time Machine backups are the simplest way to back up your Mac and it's definitely recommended. Whether you have a hard drive that you buy, like such as this little WD backup drive here that I've been using for quite some time, or you buy one of Apple's Time Machine backup devices that basically lives inside of a router, there are some pretty cool things that you can get out there. Now, in our offices, we have a uh, network attached server, a NAS that we use, and our Macs connect to that and do a Time Machine backup to that periodically throughout the day and every night. So we don't have to really do anything because it's all automated. Now at home, I use a drive like this. I plug the drive into the side of my computer and overnight it backs up and I have a backup now at home as well. So not only do I have a backup of my laptop at work, but I have a backup at home. If something happens where you know the backup drive and my Mac got stolen, at least in another location, I still have a backup. So for me, having uh, redundant backups is definitely important. All right, so when you plug in a drive, it's gonna show up on your desktop, and uh, of course you can access that drive, but what you're gonna need to do is go and open up System Preferences, and you're gonna need to assign that as a backup drive, as a Time Machine drive. So in System Preferences, tap on Time Machine, and if you have a disk selected, you're gonna see that right here. You can see that the Time Machine that we have locally on our network is available here, but you can add multiple. So let's go ahead and click on Select Disk. Now we have the option to use or remove a disk. I can remove a disk if there's one that's already connected, or I can add a disk that is now available. In this, in this case, it's the WD-1 terabyte. Uh, that's more than enough space to back up my laptop because my laptop only has 512 gigabytes. This hard drive is one terabyte. So you wanna make sure that you have a hard drive that you're connecting to your computer that has more space available on it than what your computer is currently using. So if you're not sure what your computer is currently using, uh, you know, simply go and open up Finder, uh, scroll down to your computer's name, choose whatever the name of your hard drive is, Mac hard drive or whatnot, and then hit Command I and it will show you the capacity of your drive and the available space and how much is used. So I would need a drive that has at least 256 gigabytes of space on it in order to do a backup. So I'm gonna use this disk and it's gonna say, do you wanna stop backing up Time Machine and use WD or use both? I could say use both. You probably won't see that message unless you are in fact adding a secondary backup. 
and it's going to want to erase your drive and format it. This is a basic thing that it does for connected drives that are not ready to be Time Machine backup drives. So I'll go ahead and hit erase and it's going to format this drive and then make it a Time Machine backup drive. Now, if you don't want that to happen, if this drive has other things on it that you don't want erased, I recommend using a different drive or if you're a little more of an advanced user, you could partition the drive so that you have storage space on it and a time machine backup space on it, but that's a little more advanced. So only do that if you really feel confident in you know, playing with partitions and stuff like that. So after it's done formatting and partitioning this drive, I can go ahead and let it start doing the backup process. Uh, the first time that you've done a time machine backup, it's gonna take a bit more time because it's backing up the entire computer. In the future, once you have some time machine backups that have already ran, it's only gonna back up what it needs to back up. So the time machine backups are gonna go much faster. So let's go ahead and wait for this process to complete. So one of the things that you can do to make sure that your time machine is backing up is make sure that it shows time machine and menu bar. This adds a little time machine icon up in the menu bar of your screen, and when you're backing up, it will be spinning. Now, if you wanna force your computer to back up, you can always hit backup now, and it will start the backup process immediately. Sometimes I do this, especially in situations like this where I wanna make sure I have a backup done, and then I wanna go and perform my upgrade. Now, we're really early here since the release, so I'm gonna to have to go and do a search for Sierra in the App Store in order to find it, but I guarantee by the time that you see this video, when you open up the App Store, it's gonna be one of the first things that you see. Now you'll need to download OSX Sierra and it may take a little bit of time to download, so begin that process. Once Mac OS Sierra has loaded, you will have an install screen here showing up. Now Mac OS Sierra is now the new name. Mac OS X is not the name of the operating system anymore. They've unified the name, so Mac OS is now what it's called instead of OS X. Click continue to start the installation. Click agree and agree. Select your target disk, hit install, put in your password, and the installation process will begin. The next step is to click restart. So the installation process of Mac OS Sierra can take a little while. Uh, the process here sometimes, depending on the speed of your computer, could take 15 minutes, it could take up to an hour. So prepare to be patient and make sure that your computer is plugged into power. It will not let you complete a full install without being plugged into power, so make sure that you do connect it. If you're on a laptop, make sure that you can remain connected to electricity until the installation has completed. All right, now when the process is complete, you should be back at your login screen. Now, if you had any issues during the setup, such as your screen going completely dark and it seems to stay like that forever, just go ahead and hold down the power button on your computer, let it power down on its own. If you hold it down for about 10 seconds, it will just shut itself off. And then go ahead and wait a couple of seconds, then hold down the power button for a second again to power the computer back on, and it will resume the process. I had that happen on my laptop, and all I had to do was just a restart. It resumed the installation process, and then here I am. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on my name here, put in my password, and then I'm presented with a screen that wants me to sign into my Apple ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my password for my Apple ID, accept the terms and conditions, and then allow it to finish the setup process, which should only take a second or two. Now one of the last things it's gonna do is ask you to enable Siri on your Mac. So we'll go ahead and click on continue to do that, and it will finish the setup process. All right, so it kept my background. I get this little optimizing your Mac. So it says performance and battery life may be affected. It's basically going through and looking through the hard drive to make sure uh, there aren't any changes it needs to make note of. Now you're gonna notice down in, the, in your dock, it says Siri. We can click on Siri and it says, what can I help you with? So it will go ahead and uh, you know, allow us to ask it questions. We also have Siri up in the top right hand corner. And the settings for Siri are located in your system preferences. So if I hold command space, it brings up Siri. So that's a, a familiar shortcut because command space brings up spotlight search. So if we hold down command space, we can ask Siri a question. What is the weather outside today? It's currently 73 degrees. 
Now, one of the things that I've noticed is that to make sure that Siri can hear you, it actually pauses the fans on your computer. This is kind of interesting. Anytime I initiate Siri, the fans pause on my MacBook Pro so that the microphone can hear me more clearly. It's kind of interesting. How far is Sacramento, California? Sacramento is about 69 miles away as the crow flies. So this is pretty cool that Siri is now available on our desktop and we can ask Siri all the questions that we would typically have to go to our phone for. So now we have Mac OS Sierra installed. It's gonna take me a while to stop saying Mac OS X. We have Mac OS Sierra installed and running on our system here. Uh, now the next thing that you would wanna do is maybe go and do another Time Machine backup. Open some of the applications that you have, uh, that you use on your system. Make sure that they work appropriately before you decide this is final. You can always go and restore your system back and use that time machine backup that you created in the beginning of this video uh, and take your Mac back to the previous version should you need to. So that's gonna do it for today's video. Thanks so much for checking it out. I hope that you think about it before you upgrade. Upgrading on day one isn't always the best, especially when there's a lot of software out there that may or may not be compatible. So go check to make sure that the software that you use and the hardware devices that you plug in are compatible with Mac OS Sierra. And if they are, happy upgrading. We'll see you next time here on State of Tech. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for videos such as this. We'd love to have you along for the ride and you'll get notified whenever we release new videos. I also put links to a couple of drives that I think would make excellent backups for Time Machine in the description of this video. So if you're interested, click on those links. Thanks again and we'll see you next time on State of Tech.